Hello, welcome to another Ride of Pilates where we're going to be focusing on your spine today. Obviously that real connection between your seat and your contact, that area that we really need to have the strength to deal with the movement that comes up through the horse. So a really key area for all of us riders to be working on, not just in terms of this movement to move with the horse, but also our ability to rotate both ways so we can move with the horse in the more lateral movements as well. So let us get started. Um, I hope you can see me well enough with the sun coming round, fingers crossed um, I will still show up. So let's think about your posture with a light head, relaxed shoulders, headlights forwards and equal weight through your feet. And then tuck your chin in, keep that little tuck as you turn to one side and keep the tuck as you turn to the other side. So you should find if you're keeping that tuck, that you're not turning all the way over your shoulder. It's just a little, little turn and your eyes are staying level all the way through as well. Okay, then facing the front, drop your knees into a little bit of a squat, arms across your chest and then you're turning your shoulders from side to side. Now you're focusing on keeping your shoulders level. Your headlights are forwards. So all of that movement is happening through your spine, not from your pelvis and your legs. Feel your feet, have your equal weight through your feet. There's something to really transfer into the saddle as well, making sure that you've got equal weight through your feet and you're not loading one foot more than the other or equally that you're not scrunching up one foot. Okie doke. Let's go to the end of your mat. So with your feet together and your knees soft, hands on the front of your thighs, tuck your chin into your chest and you're sliding your hands down, curling up nice and tight through your spine as you go. Pull to the bottom for a breath in. Breathe out, bend your knees, tuck down with your pelvis and uncurl up through. Then again, chin into your chest and then focus on every single vertebra between your shoulders, middle of your back, low back, then your pelvis. Another breath in at the bottom. Breathe out, slide your hands up, tuck down with your pelvis and you're stacking each vertebra. Low back, mid back, upper back, through your neck and your chin up last. And then one more time, chin in and feel like you're curling up as tight as a ball. Breathing in the bottom as you breathe out, bend your knees down onto your mat. And we're going to start off on your hands and knees doing your cat stretch. So have your hands under your shoulders, your knees under your hips, and you're arching your back upwards. You'll probably find you're licking between your knees, and then dip down, and you'll probably find you're licking your head. So with this, you still want every single vertebra to be moving on its own, but they all need to be moving at the same time. With the roll down, you're getting a bit more of a like a domino effect with the cat stretch you want everything to be moving in one go which is a little bit more like how it is on the horse small movements not as big as this when you're in the saddle but everything moving doing its little piece all together do one more each way and then we're going to move down so that you are on your front and we're going to do your cobra so flat with your arms out to the side, elbows bent to about 90 degrees, tip of your nose resting on the floor and you're then you're going to come up. So your elbows are still on the floor but you're looking straight ahead and then straight down and scoop back in. So scooping forwards and up, elbows stay on the floor, straight down and scoop back in. If you want to go a little bit further, Bring your elbows slightly forwards and take your hands slightly to the side. It's not a big movement. Then scoop and up, but you'll come up onto your hands. Then straight down and scoop back in. So scooping and up, straight down and scooping in. And whichever version you're doing, you're still wanting to do that individual vertebra movement. Use the front of your tummy, the front of your chest to give you that feeling of peeling up. Each vertebra in turn and coming back down. Each vertebra in turn. Do one more. And then you're going to pop up 
onto your forearms and we are going to do your swan dive from this position. So you're looking at your hands, wherever you are now, hopefully it's something like my position, this is your starting and finishing point. Look at your hands and then you're lifting, so that area at the base of your neck, lifting up to the ceiling and relax into your starting point. So you're lifting to the ceiling, relax to your starting point, but try not to sink right down into this position. So starting point and up and back down. It's important with this one as well that you stay looking down. If you start to look ahead like you did with the cobra, you'll actually block that movement. So eyes firmly fixed on your hands, so you can really open out that area between your shoulder blades. It's an area where a lot of us carry a lot of tension, so it's a good exercise to do. Gently stretch that top part of your spine in between your shoulders. Do one more. Okie doke, well done. We are now going to turn onto your back and we're going to do your shoulder bridge. So make sure that your feet are reasonably close to your bottom so that you limit the chance of getting any hamstring cramp. Pelvic floor onto floor three, you're imprinting your pelvis and then peeling up into your bridge position. At the top, make sure that you're basically a straight line from shoulders, hips to knees. Watch that you haven't really overarched. And then you're coming back down, imprinting your low back and pelvis at the bottom. So it's imprint, peeling up again. We want that individual vertebra movement, each one in turn. And then coming back down. We're going to do one more just like that. Okay, then I would like you to pop your feet into a frog legs position. So feet are touching each other, soles of feet are touching each other, and we're going to do the same thing again. So imprint and peel up. Again, try to stop before you end up in this overarch position and come back down through your imprint. So this might feel quite strange, but this is a good way of just altering how much you use your hip muscles, which hip muscles you use, how you use them, but still being able to control your spine as you do it. So when we're in the saddle, we're not always in the perfect position. All sorts of things happen, let's be honest. And you suddenly find you're not in the ideal position. The horse is spooked, you're jumping and it does something weird, it puts in an extra stride, takes off really early. You're all over the place suddenly. You want to know that whatever's happening, you've got the control that you need. Okay, we're going to change it now. And I would like you to pop your right leg back into your normal bridge position and pop your left leg across in front. And then again, imprint, peel up. And then bring yourself back down through your imprint to neutral. So again, we're still looking that controlled up Control down. Pelvis staying level as much as you possibly can. And then let's swap and do the same thing with the other combination. So weight is on your left leg, right leg is crossed, pelvic floor imprint peel up, breathing at the top of course, and coming back down. That was a bit speedy for me, so imprint, peel up, breathing at the top, control it better on the way back down, Louise, through your imprint. Again, you're focused on keeping those headlights level, so your legs are in completely different positions, but you still want your pelvis to be level. So this is a good practice for when you are doing maybe lateral work, We've got one leg on the girth, one leg behind. They're in different positions, but you still want to have your pelvis position pretty neutral, pretty equal in the middle. And we're going to do one last one. Okay, bring your right leg back down, pop your feet and knees together, bring your arms out to the side. We need to do your double hip twist. So taking your knees to one side 
and then look over the opposite shoulder, you'll notice that my feet are glued together, so the top foot has come off the floor with the bottom foot. Up to the top and then the same thing the other way. And if you want, you can hold, taking, if most of us have one side, we feel a bit stiffer too, for me it's this way, you can hold that position if you want, or you can gently rock between the two sides, whichever feels best for your back. Okay, then bring your knees back up, and I'd like you to take hold of your knees or your legs and hold, well, really how it feels comfortable. For most people I've noticed it tends to be around the back of the thighs. Relax into that position, focus on relaxed breathing, and then just gently see if you can allow yourself to rock from side to side. But not a big movement, just a gentle rock, and allow your weight just to roll over, just off your spine one way, and just off your spine the other way. And try to be really relaxed as you do it. Okay, then one at a time bring your feet back down and I'd like you to come up into kneeling. So you've got one foot up in front of you, bring your hands together and you're going to push your hands forward and up so you really stretch down through your sides and bring your arms back down and again push forwards and reach up and stretch and lengthen. Bring your arms down, then we're going to swap, pop the other foot up in front of you, and again push forwards, reach up and stretch, come back down, and we're going to do one more, so forwards and stretch and up and lengthen, bring your arms back down, and we have finished there. So I hope you have found all of those exercises nice ones to do. You may have found some of them harder to do from a control point of view or possibly from a stiffness point of view, but still keep working on them. The more you work at them, the better you move and the stronger you can control that movement, if that makes sense, the better you will be in the saddle. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's, it just makes my day. Um, look after yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.